So on this episode of Speak Your Brain, I had my dear friend Liberty. She's a model, blogger, and a content creator. And I had so much fun talking to her, honestly. Here it is. For the amount of time that I've gotten to know you, yeah, um, it seems like you have a lot of plans and you're very organized and yes. uh, you're very structured and you have like certain goals that you're gonna like hit, bomb, bomb, bomb. So why don't you like start by saying all the things that you're about to do and all the things you're about yeah. to drop? Like those are okay. really exciting things you were just telling me. I was no, like, what? It is. Yeah, no, I'm so excited. I just want to build something that is like way bigger than like being a hot girl. Like I think there's so many hot girls out there. Good and for you. I just feel like in a way we have to prove ourselves even more that we're pretty and we're more than just being pretty. Right. Um, and also just for like I have high expectations and high standards for myself. So I really wanted to build. <laughs> this is the first time we're doing this way. We always do the table do you want me to, like should I, this. Like, face? But oh, then if I look at the camera, that's sorry, weird. Sorry. Doing, this is good. I'm gonna. <laughs> oh my god, we've never had so much we're... issue. No, I just want to make sure we get it right. So if, yeah, if I can turn this. I just want you a little more. Because like doesn't that. it make sense for you to be looking? Yes, at? this yeah. does make so much more sense. I get, yeah. I'm like, I, I can't talk you, to the curtain. Yeah. Let me just, <laughs> no, please don't. <laughs> like, hey, I just talk want to tell me. you about the brand I'm dropping. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so tell me, all the yeah. things that you're doing, you have so many plans, so yes. many very goal-oriented, yes. very structured. So just like bang those things out. Like, what are, you, what, what are your plans for the near future, the things that you're doing? Because they seemed really exciting to me. Yeah, so I am literally obsessed with just growth in general, something that I put on my Instagram stories weekly is uh, goal setting. So I'm an avid goal setter. I have five journals. I believe that it's one of the best ways to really like manifest what you want out of your future. Um, and it just really helps just put everything in one place for you to want to like to understand and to see in paper like, okay, what do I want to do? And then you like make baby steps to get there. So I'm going to be launching a goals journal and it's going to help with those like little baby steps on how to like get to the bigger picture, get to that huge goal that you're like, it doesn't seem attainable right now, but I want to make all these small little baby steps and make little goals to get to that big goal. So I'm going to be launching an amazing journal and it's gonna be super chic it's gonna be adorable like something that you're gonna want to have on your bookshelf because the number one thing that I noticed and why I wanted to create it is because when you google or you you know Amazon search a journal one they're just not aesthetic they're not cute like I would never want to like hold it and they just have they have no drive there's nothing in them that motivates me right um, I think the most popular one is the five minute journal which is amazing. I love the concept of a five minute journal, but their journal is so repetitive. It's literally the same page a hundred times throughout the book. So How's yours going to be different? Mine's going to be different because I set goals weekly. So it comes on like the main difference is going to be on Sunday. So Sunday, you need to set weekly goals. What are your intentions for the week? What do you need to be working on? Um, and that list right there is going to just help you like organize. So then when it comes to Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, you can choose from that list of which day am I going to do what and when. And so it helps you just basically organize your life. So you're, I avidly believe in lists because how you're going to forget, you know? Right. So the Sunday is going to be the biggest change is that you have to have these <laughs> weekly goals. Right. And um, I'm also going to have a section which I do this so much and I haven't heard of like, anyone else other than Steve Jobs that has done it, but it's where you score yourself mm. on how well you're doing in different categories. So financially, personally, relationships, physically. And so all of the goals that you have there within each of those categories, like say physically, like you want to, um, you know, tone your stomach by, you know, one inch. Okay, so like that's something that a lot of people would want, right, is they have that one inch difference they want to make. Okay, well, how well did you do this week putting in the effort for that one inch? And what steps did you actually take this week to, yes. to do that? Exactly. So then you score yourself from one to ten. And you obviously are looking and being a little bit more critical with yourself of like, okay, maybe I didn't do that great this week in this category. Right. So that helps you visually see it. So that's like one right. of the main things is creating this journal. Right. I think that's a great thing. Um, and that's a huge problem with like New Year's resolutions because it's like people make all these like basically wishes because it's like I, I, I remember that I was like talking to one of my guy friends and he was like, by the age of 40, I want to um, 
build a skyscraper. I was like, okay, what's your plan? Because right. you're like plan. 32, you're not in school for architecture, you have yeah. no experience in doing so. Um, what exactly is your plan? So at that point, that's a, that's a wish. That's not a plan. It's like exactly. when you break down the baby steps that you're saying and you um, organize it and you monitor yourself and you see how well you did week by week, then... Yep. Obviously, after a few years, you're going to look back and you're like, oh, shit, I'm actually like close to doing this. But mm -hmm. the problem with all the New Year's resolutions is that it, they just remain a wish or they just carry on until like the end of February. And then people just like give up on them because there's no structure. Yep. And so I took the uh, Myers-Briggs personality test uh, from Liberty and her personality type is ENFJ, which stands for extrovert. Uh, intuitive uh, feeling and J is for judging which should not be misconstrued for judgmental J is for people who like to organize and have structure and they're obsessed with lists I love how you literally just said I like lists yes I like like and like the journaling like you all very obviously have a structure to every aspect of your life as mm -hmm. you just said yeah um Let's say someone like me, I'm an ENTP. So the last uh, letter, yours is a J for judging, mine is a P for perceiver. We were also just discussing this. A perceiver is um, kind of on the other side of the spectrum are people who like open-ended decisions. They don't really have or keep lists. They're not as organized. Uh, they're not as decisive as J's or mm -hmm. judges. Um, so then for those people, it's good to know that, hey, this is your weakness. Maybe you should buy <laughs> Liberty's <laughs> goal journal and you yeah. can like keep track of your goals and you can you need you need to have stuff like this. You mm -hmm. need to keep track of yourself. Mm -hmm. And I think looking back to it really motivates you because you're not going to notice the really small baby steps. Right. You're really not. It, you're going to notice like we were just talking about how much we've changed in the past year even, right? Like the girl that you were a year ago doesn't compare to the girl that you are right now. Absolutely. But did you feel like you were changing? No, day by day, you don't really you don't feel notice. it. don't notice, yeah. In retrospect, you're like, wow, it's yeah. a lot of change. Yeah. If you're mindful of, of your change though, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's setting intentions at the end of the day and knowing that anything that you want to achieve is attainable it's literally up to you right and it's honestly like there's no excuse like for someone that wants to build a skyscraper like great do it how are you going to get there and like you said like doing the research creating a small plan and understanding like okay well what's step one what right. is step one is that just google searching is that writing it down is that calling somebody who knows like you know whatever that first step is it's just taking the initiative to stack step into a space that is probably uncomfortable it's going to help you grow though so that's the best thing that you can do for yourself if right you get bigger. setting intentions is something that um i've been hearing a lot about it but i kind of like thought of it a while ago when i would um for example, go out with my friends and mm. I would, for example, drink more than I would want to. And then I realized, okay, how can I like not do that? Because when you go out, you're like surrounded by your friends. Mm. Peer pressure is a real serious thing, especially if you have like friends like me. Well, they will like literally hold <laughs> the back of your head. <laughs> my friends do this. They will hold the back <gasps> oh. of your head and shove the yeah. shot down <laughs> your throat. Like you stand no chance. <laughs> it's very... <laughs> That's very aggressive. <laughs> that is very aggressive. <laughs> so I, I literally I can't. <laughs> Savage. <laughs> and so um setting intentions was something that with me was like, okay, I'm not just gonna go and like give myself to my environment and to whatever the vibe is. I'm going knowing how I'm going to be, how I'm going to act, how I'm going to behave, how I'm going to speak tonight. Yep. Who do I want to be? Am I going to be like, hey, look, sometimes you want to go out and you just want to get fucked up. You want to party, whatever the reason. But then if you don't want that to be every time, setting intentions can yeah. be so important. And have your friends know your intentions. They can help you a lot. Yeah. I always tell my friends exactly what I'm doing. One, because I'm extremely open about what I'm doing because I believe that being open is just who I am. I'm extremely honest and vulnerable with people. But two, they will hold you accountable. Like if they see you like 
say for instance with the relationships like I was telling you in the car that I feel like I can be a little bit like aggressive I can I'm very strong personality and I've noticed over the years that I'm like wow I can be a little aggressive with people and not intentionally hurt people's feelings but I'm so blunt like right like if you're the girl that walks in a room and like says does this dress look good on me and it does and I'm 100% the friend that's like no it looks like shit go change right so I but like I think there's a lot of good in that because I'm just brutally honest but it can be a bad thing because it's like if, why do you ask if you don't want to hear the yeah, truth yeah why but do you some people ask? like what i've learned is there's a way to say it in a way that's a little bit more fluffy and nice and like just <laughs> it's cute you know like it's right. a nice so i'm learning this about myself you know that is something that i had to learn too because i i was originally like like that too but now i'm yeah. like well, I love how it accentuates your curves, but... <laughs> but it looks like shit. <laughs> it looks like shit. <laughs> Change. <laughs> but the thing is, you know, is like if you if I tell my friends, hey, I'm trying to do this, they'll be like, hey, no, you could say it like this. That was a bitch move. You know, like they'll tell me right away. Like, don't say it. You know, they yeah. help you, though. They help you grow. So I think that one of the best things you could do is talk to the people around you and tell them exactly what your goals are. Right. Yeah. I like that. I have how many? How many? Okay, I journal too. Actually, a Love. lot. I've yeah. always done it. And what pe- a lot of people don't understand is journaling and keeping, you know, like a little notebook or whatever. It doesn't have to be like a dear diary. I was just thinking that. So many people <laughs> think that it's like this dear diary. Today I met so and so, and it was great. And later on in the day, I did this, and I'm so right. happy. Or right. today was awful. I had the worst day ever. Right. It's not that at all. It's not that at all. At all. Yeah. I don't it, even have a book like this. Right. At all. Yeah. Yeah. I have. I let me see how many I have. I have. I think three journals. I have a goal journal that I would actually love to show you because yeah. it does seem a lot similar to what you're saying. It's like week by week. Yep. And I love how there's something that I think you should definitely add to your journal to like. This mm-hmm. what I like about this goal is that every day starts with saying today I am grateful for. Yes. And then it gives like two lines. And then this is something that I always try to talk to people to. And like it's so cliche, but writing your gratitudes and thinking of them insanely changes the narrative in your head. Yes. Like you yeah. just start focusing on the positive things in your life and you will only see the positives. Yes. You can still acknowledge the negative, but you just like don't put so much weight on them. Mm. And then more positive will come to you. Mm. So I think you should definitely put that there too. I love that. But I have one journal that's like a finance journal. Like I literally like yes. write so important. how much I make every week and like uh, my biggest expenses and like how much I, it's like a finance thing mm-hmm. like my own accountant I like so force smart. my it's like not fun to do it but I like force myself to like <laughs> sit down and like go over my uh, bank accounts and like write everything down and then I have uh, the gold journal that I told you which is like literally like planning all the things that I want to like do so and you achieve. go by week your goal journal is by week only by week. like do you do monthly goals or do you do any long more oh, long actually it's goals? not weekly it's every 10 days I think okay. I yeah. think it's every 10 days yeah and then you score yourself at the end you yep. write what didn't work out how could you have done different so that it would work out and you yep. like rate yourself kind of like actually similar to what you're saying and yep. I haunted this notebook down it was so hard to find and yeah. I like it's like it's awful. Very like, yeah. Should not be that hard. Right. <laughs> and like, that, I just want something that's cute that I want to write in. And something also that I hate is like when the lines are too big or too small. Like it has to, you know what I mean? Like yeah. it's got to flow. It's got to be just right. Yeah. And it has to be like pretty. And then I have another. So you have a, you have a personal, a financial and a gold journal. Those and are your then, three. And then I have a little journal that I always carry in my bag with like a Me pen too. that's like yep stick to it Me too. and then i literally will write all the things all the ideas that come to my head mm. all the quotes that i hear that i really like all the things that i just hear or listen whether it's in a podcast or in a book or in a cool. d- whatever it is i just like rem- anything that like inspires me so it's a little bit more like a touchy feely like a creative book right yeah exactly I exactly love that. yeah i have a small notebook as well but that's like my I just call it like my throw up notebook because everything that's in my head I just throw up on right. that. I'm like, Same. get it out of my head because it, ha- it helps also with sleeping. Wow, we're very similar in that yeah. sense then. We, yeah. we um, yeah, we do kind of the same thing, which is interesting because yeah. you're a J and it comes naturally to you to do that. Yes. But I'm a, I'm a perceiver, so it doesn't come naturally to me. But I kind of like figured yeah. that this is what I need to do to like kind of keep track of everything. I also just believe in productivity. If right. you really want to make something happen, like 
and you and you don't set yourself accountable for being productive you're not gonna do it like you're gonna talk yourself out of the hard stuff that's so natural for us we're human you know we're gonna of course of course we'd rather eat the piece of cake than go for the salad like it's a no-brainer but it's the self-discipline for the people that want to have you know the long-term effects of having a very healthy body a good mindset a clean mind like everything versus the people who are going to become obese who are going to fall into other bad habits because it's literally a pattern right you know once you do one thing it's the next the next the next so it's the same thing with positive things once you start taking initiative it's a pattern and a ripple effect right what are the things that like like what's your thing that takes away from who you want to be is it the chocolate cake is it like laziness is it boys um what like what is it i think that it's my expectations of myself i have such high expectations of myself so the things that like i think about like failure like i'm okay with failing but i'm not okay with being stagnant maybe that's a better word i don't want to be stagnant so like laziness is 100% like I will not I'm not a lazy person you cannot yeah. call me lazy I'm the opposite I'm like if I'm sitting down for 20 minutes I'm going to find something to do like I'm gonna either clean up do the dishes I could go upstairs I could do I, I have so my to-do list doesn't end so I'm constantly like moving 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 right look my to-do list doesn't end either yeah. it's so yeah. much but then like when I sit yeah I sit. <laughs> You're like, I'm chilling. I'm yeah. done. It's like, as long as I'm not yeah. sitting and I'm like, sometimes I get home and I will yeah. not change out of my clothes into like comfy home clothes because yeah. as soon as the bra comes off, <laughs> oh, that's it. I feel like that's so much more relatable, <laughs> but I'm not like this at all. Good I don't for know you. why. I'm so jealous. No, but it's no, you're jealous because you, you think all these things, but the, the problem is. Let me see your you can push for yourself your into overdrive very easily. So I have to be careful. I have to force myself to take off days. Wow. And even on off days, I'm like, it's okay. I'll just do emails because I'm not like yeah. dressing up. You know, Your judging is pretty high. Your 30%, your 30% of your personality mm. is being that, being productive yeah. and structured yeah, and so detailed. Me. And yeah. Yeah, it's so me. But I mean, if there's anything that does like pull me aside, that does like allow me to relax, is I'm definitely into going on hikes, going to the beach. I really love traveling. If I can right. travel all the time, I would be. Right. Um, and I just enjoy being around my friends. I'm re- like, I have such an amazing friend circle. So I'm always texting my girlfriends. What are you doing? Where are you? When are we having our girls dinner? Like, I probably have like at least three three girls dinners per week. Like, my apartment is like home based, and I'm like, everybody come over. Like, I just like having and you people like hosting. Over. I love hosting. Oh god, I, I hate like hosting. to have people around over twenty four seven. Oh what? I'm so... I would not want to be a roommate. <laughs> I know honestly my poor room I'm like sorry like I don't know if she's intro or extra though I haven't had her take the you should have her take the test I should I should it seems like you guys get along fine but I never have people over at my house I feel like most people are like that but no I'm so I want people over I want to like make food I want to watch movies I want to talk I and the thing that's cool is I have I'm surrounded by girls who like I told you earlier are beautiful and smart like right. they're all amazing in yeah. every aspect so like when they come over it's not like we're like oh did you see the tiktok like no we are 100 percent like oh what book are you reading right now let's talk about it where are you going what's your next thing how what are you working on what can we work on together? i love that you yeah. know and you're not lying i just was i just went to her house we just had a shoot right before the podcast yeah. together and you went upstairs to like change or whatever and i kind of got like a couple minutes with your roommate yeah and you know we were just kind of like by ourselves like two strangers so I started making some small talk and yeah. she was just immediately so not interested and I was like girl you know what honestly I love that because I'm also not interested I'm just trying to be nice yeah so let's just like enjoy our comfortable silence yeah. and just like sit on the opposite sides of the couch but then the photographer came and he said something about quantum physics and then yes. me and her just immediately yeah. started talking about like yeah. have you read so this her. book yes. have you read yep. that and then we just like the photographer yeah. was like waiting and me and your roommate were just like talking <laughs> for like a few minutes yes and then after our so shoot true. was done like i could see that she's so much more eager to talk to me and then i was like this is so fucking cool no it is yeah <laughs> it, it really is i'm the same way though i think that's why her and i hit it off like, the worst is small talk. I'm sorry, I can't. I know. It's the worst. Like, I just want to, like, let's talk about ideas, things, what's going, what's happening next in the world. How are we going to, how are we going to fix it? But you can't just do that with a stranger, though. Like, when you just meet someone, you kind of That's gotta, my extra, like, babe. <laughs> you kind of got to, like. I'm so extroverted. Just, it kills me inside when yeah. we're talking about the weather. 
it genuinely I feel like someone's stabbing me on the inside when we're yeah. when we're, it comes to the part of conversation where we're just like it's so nice outside have you seen this like bitch it's always nice in LA yeah I, I don't talk about that. <laughs> it's facts it's facts though I agree I agree <laughs> I don't know I think that just ha- being surrounded by good people is honestly just what drives you though like you're the the most true statement is you are who you surround yourself with a hundred percent uh I don't know where this, uh I read this but it said um something that always like stuck by me it said, uh, you are the summary of the five closest people to you. 100%. Right? Yeah. And I paid closer attention to that. It's 100% accurate. Yes. 100%. Well, because there's something in all of them that you seek out and usually that parallels to you. So Remember when we were kids and our mom would be like, don't hang out with her. She's going to like influence you the wrong oh, way. And you're like, yes. I don't take influence, mom. <laughs> I am non-changeable it's like no you do you that's don't what's so that. funny is like those friends the bad friends are always the best ones though i know i was always around the ones that were like kind of bad and i'm like i know <laughs> like it i want to go to their house because their mom is like more lenient or like m- like mama let us go like hang out with the boys right and like if you went to my house but i was like no <laughs> it's not happening well that's your so bad funny. was a different than mine i remember in fourth grade i had a i had like i became really close to this one girl who like nobody would really be friends with because like everyone's mom had told them like stay away from her because she's like you know trouble or whatever and obviously i wanted to see like what's going on yeah and like i became friends with her and she tried to touch my boob in fourth grade a girl i was like wait even if you are gay how did you like figure it out i mean I i guess that's a stupid thing to say (laughs) <laughs> but, but <laughs> I guess you always like no even in fourth grade I mean do you because in fourth grade you're not even like into sex I mean I'm not gonna lie I had a full on make my first make out with the girl <laughs> when but how old were you I swear how um old you? I was in elementary school for sure okay like first grade or like what I don't know be honest I mean I think I, I honestly it wasn't like first grade I want to say it was like probably fifth grade and we like went under this coat because <laughs> we were like like at school but it, the thing is is it wasn't like that because it was more so just we just were like i really wonder what it's like to make out and she was like yeah me too and i'm like should we just make out to like know what to do oh you guys like talked about it yeah we talked you, like, about had it. a discussion no because we weren't like into each other we were friends right i was like but i want to know like what to do like what happens when i like a boy and i need to make out with them like what do like we do like a practice yeah so, yeah <laughs> so we went and we made out under a coat and i <laughs> and i just remember it being awful like just <laughs> My entire face it was so wet. Like, like just licked and everything. Just, oh yeah, she just like licked my face. And I was like, <laughs> "It's terrible." I was like, "I'm not gonna do that again." Well, we'll wait. Yeah, I did that with my cousin. <laughs> my my practice buddy when what? I was a kid. Yeah. Okay. I can't. My practice I buddy when I was a tell. kid was my cousin who was a female. Yeah. But um, we would practice. That is so funny. Everything. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, that's just cu- <laughs> that's just curiosity. So. And the strangest like, it's so thing, real. The strangest thing is that like we completely grew apart and we don't talk. Yeah. But like, I wonder if she ever thinks <laughs> <laughs> about you. <laughs> it's like when you're like, with him. Hey, do, you do you think remember? Of me? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is so fun. I can't. I can't get that out of my head. That's all I want to think about when I see you next. <laughs> yeah good times uh, that's so hilarious i'm dead <laughs> with ricky martin in the background oh i remember so i fucking hate that i remember so much of that i can't that your thing. memory is better than mine but how we would do it we would like i would be the girl and she would be the guy we would do like a role like play the, yeah gender roles on each yeah, other we would do like a role play oh and our names were tom and jerry <laughs> <laughs> because we Cute, so love that. Tom and Jerry all the time. so fire we would do role play like i just like landed in town at the airport and like this guy like offered to grab my bags oh. and then we just fell madly in love like dude yeah. it was very a elaborate on, it was a full-on yeah. role play yeah, yeah it really wow. was. she was wow. also the one who told me about sex i like what it was yeah how old were you when you found out about sex i feel like pretty young i was so curious so young how I feel like I, I found out know. really late. I don't know. I mean, young. Like elementary or? 100% elementary school. I think I was I'm in positive. Because I was talking, <laughs> I got in trouble when I was in third grade. So it was definitely third grade at least or less before that. But I, fu- I was in trouble in third grade because there was this, this kid that sat next to me that I really liked. And um, we would like pass notes in class, right? 
Um, obviously, you're never supposed to pass notes, but we right. kept passing notes. And then eventually got like intimate. We're like, oh, I wonder, like, we should kiss, like, at, at like uh, recess. And then after that, we eventually full on started like having like, like, uh, not like girl? sexting. No, it was a guy. Okay. Like, full on, not sexting, but like, we were like writing sex notes to each other. I was like, we should have sex like in this place, like full fantasy, full on fantasy. <laughs> and I would like pass it to him. And the teacher <gasps> found it, dude. Oh, I literally, no. I literally like, cr- <laughs> like, cringe. Like call your parents. Calls my parents, gives my dad the notes Fucking for snitch. him to just read. I was in so much trouble. But you know what's hilarious is he's now gay. <laughs> you turned him. So I'm like, <laughs> I did, yeah. He was like, I'm not doing that again. <laughs> I don't know for girls, yeah. Uh, okay. Um, tell us about your previous relationship ooh. that you you wanted to talk about. Ooh. Um, was that a good segue? <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> Um, so I dated this guy. You're doing guy. great, sweetie. And thanks. <laughs> Can you hold my hand? <laughs> um, so I dated a guy for five years. Right. Previous. I moved to LA. Um, I had like, I don't even know, like maybe a year. And then, yeah, because I've been here six years. So I had like a year. Met him and then dated him for five years. And it was the most insane five years of my life. Um, Good insane or bad insane? Both both because like you're growing up with them you know right. like i met him when i was literally 18 right so yeah a lot of growing up um it was great until it wasn't <laughs> and basically just all of the things that you could imagine of la temptation got to him and he just decided to go that route and i was just not about it he became a promoter um <laughs> honestly wouldn't be surprised but <laughs> Yeah, so I broke up with him in May after a whole falling out. It was insane. And so I'm, like, for the first time in L.A., like, as a single girl, and not only that, just, like, alone. Right. I've, like, been in L.A. I don't know. I mean, you have a boyfriend, but I don't know how long you guys have been dating. But you, but he's not even here, so you do know what it's like. It's so weird for me to think of the concept of, like, being in L.A. alone because yeah, LA is insane. It's crazy. It has so many temptations. There's so much going on, and but you're um, so it's strong intimidating. and independent. Yes, unless but you have no. to program your garage onto your car, then, <laughs> I can't then do that. that's a different story. <laughs> no, that is then not you my need job. A guy. <laughs> <laughs> then I need a guy. <laughs> no, but it's not even that I needed a man. It just I I felt like he was my backbone for the longest time. You know, because I mean, they're your best. They're your best friend, right. right? And I was totally intending on having a future with him. So. It was really weird. It happened really um, abruptly. Our breakup came out of nowhere. So uh, me walking away was like so traumatizing. But now that I'm at the place where I'm at now, I'm like, oh my God, I wish I did this like three years ago. Like I was not in the right relationship at all. Really? Why? What made it the wrong relationship to be in? Because there was a lot. I mean, he just, he was such a liar. Like he lied about literally everything. And I would always just kind of let it slide. I just let it be. Um, he gaslighted me like crazy. He was always telling me uh, that it was my fault on why he did something. So he would go and do something insane and then he would come back to me and be like, oh, that was you. And it wasn't. Right. Um, and there was just a lot of like, as far as like life, it wasn't wrong. But like as a, my moral compass and like who I am as a woman and who I intend to be, he was pushing those boundaries like crazy. Um, and so I just didn't. I didn't want it anymore. I mean, he ended up like what like broke us off is like he slept with a prostitute and I was just like dumbstruck by that. It was like on my mom's birthday and on Mother's Day. It was so crazy. How much did he pay for that? I think it was was $600 an hour. Oh, so it was a good prostitute. I have no idea. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. She looked like a man though. (laughs) So I don't even know if it was a girl. Oh, sure. Just kidding, I'm throwing shade. No, I'm not kidding, actually. I'm throwing shade and I shouldn't be, honestly. But um, no, <laughs> Is that, maybe that's a fantasy. I do not look like a man. I don't know. <laughs> he was probably thinking, my girlfriend tells me how to spend my money. I buy her all these nice things and the one time I pay for a prostitute, but he never spending paid my me own money. 
He never She's said upset. anything. <laughs> I'm upset. <laughs> <laughs> Literally. Was. No, but it was it was so awful. There was just I mean, there were so many red flags. I mean, the lying, there was a lot of like How did just, you find out? I like um through his phone, he like fell asleep. I mean, there's a whole story. I literally have that up on my Instagram. I actually did that this morning. I did my live this morning on that whole situation. More so because like it has nothing to do with like tell tattletaling on him, it has more to do with like what I did to handle it. Because when I did find out, like, you know, I feel like naturally we'd want to flip out. Like, we're five years in. I would naturally want to, like, flip out. But weirdly enough, I think I was so done and so disgusted that I just put his phone down. I screenshotted everything, airdropped it to myself because I found it on his WhatsApp from the previous night. And So you had his passcode. Yeah, yeah. Um, And I went into the living room where he was sleeping and I woke him up. And I said, we are done and you got to go. Like, you got to get out. Like, I'm not doing this. Uh, and I went into the kitchen and I remember, so much like... so fun with it. He was I sleeping. I could have, but I just you didn't. You could have done anything you wanted. <laughs> I'm just not even crazy like that. I just don't... I was literally... I don't care anymore. I'm like, you lost all You're my done. respect. Right. So I went to the bathroom. I or went to the kitchen. I just remember I was just, like, doing dishes. And he was just crying to me, like, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean to. Did you ask him why? Because okay, course. he has this beautiful I was shattered. girl. Don't, I'm not gonna act like I'm this like. Oh, it was whatever. Like no, I was shattered. Like cried for two months straight. It was right. awful. My heart right. was broken. Yeah, he has this beautiful girl, and he. It's not like he cheated with a different girl and like he made a mistake he could have like right. formatted in any way that he wanted he purposely got a prostitute to have sex with when he could have had sex with his beautiful girl so right brings yep. me to my next point yeah i wonder if he was into something like some that, fantasy right yeah that like he couldn't do it with you mm. so or didn't feel to... comfortable enough to like talk right. about it with me or be like this is what i like or right. whatever yeah right what yeah. do you think that could have been I have no idea, honestly. Did he like but like, peed that's on? like <laughs> that's a thing. It's like one of the no, I know that's a thing. It, did you see that? Who was it? Who, who? What basketball player came out that liked to be shit on? <laughs> did you not see this? <laughs> no. Do you know who I'm talking about? No. What's oh, his name? I need to. Oh, that's what I'm saying. I'm like trying to remember. I'll have him on my podcast. I that was talk a about full. Him. That was a full thing. Like he was like that was his thing. He likes to be shat on. Yes. Okay, yeah. so let's so, say. So, okay, anyways, but yeah. So, so let's say your boyfriend say, of totally, five years. totally possible, totally possible. Right, but that's so far out of a moral compass. You know what I mean? Like, I it it doesn't make any sense to me, honestly. If your boyfriend like, of five years, whom you're madly in love with, and you have this whole future planned out with him in your mind, right, comes to you and tells you, Liberty, <laughs> I love you so much, but there's this side of me that you know nothing of. And I've kept it from you for a really long time, but keeping it anymore would be lying to myself. And you're like, what, baby? Like, tell me anything. Yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah. And he goes, well, I have fantasy to be shat on by you. I can't. On my chest. I'll lay on the bed. <laughs> you just have to do it like once a <laughs> I year. <can't>. A year. <laughs> Valentine's Day. <laughs> what do you Boy, say? So witty. So witty on the spot. If I was in love with him, the thing is I was never in love with him. Hate to say that, but I wasn't in love with him. Ooh. So okay. honestly, I would have left. But like if so it was if a he guy, told you that you wouldn't have done it? No. But if it was a guy that I was in love with, I I would I would contemplate. I don't know if I would do it though. Maybe I'd be like, what if I could what if we could do this? What if we could just bring in a girl that does it? <laughs> Odell That's your one night of the year. Odell Yeah, Beckham Odell Beckham. Odell Beckham Junior likes you. to be pooped on. Thank you. He's kind of cute, too. <laughs> well, he likes to be pooped on. I mean, hey. So Football would you do player. it? Are you down? Um, <clears throat> yes. I, <laughs> short answer, yes. <laughs> um, okay, here's what I'm thinking. I'm thinking that there are lots of things that I would rather not do, but I would like always like to think of myself as an open-minded person. Obviously, yep. having to do this is Same. way... O- like open-minded and like it should not be expected of anyone and it's like not a normal situation to put a girl in (laughs) but um like i don't know i feel like when you like find someone you're like so in love and like you just fucking ride or die and you want to discover all sides of that person and that person's brain even the dirty weird 
fucking strange sides. If you're trying to go all the way with someone, I feel like you have to make them feel comfortable to share the, yes, their agreed. sides with yes, you. Agreed. You know, it's like every it's like. Okay, I always think they can't feel judged by like right. whatever it is that they right. are freaky about, right? Or not freaky, right? Yeah. I always think when somebody in a relationship lies to another person, the person that is lied to obviously has all the rights to be mad at the other person, but it's also their fault a little too because you have to make someone feel comfortable enough to tell mm-hmm. you the truth and all the truth. Yes. If you don't provide a comfortable enough environment for someone to feel like they can share every aspect of their personality with you, mm-hmm. then you can't be mad at them when they lie about something or they hide something because you haven't provided that judgment-free, comfortable space for them to be like, dude, I know it's weird, but I fucking love being shat on. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't have to be like all yeah. the time. But, you know, I would really appreciate it if you could just do like a couple times. And I'll be like, okay, I'm going to get super drunk, <laughs> like hammered. Take we're, a laxative. We're, we're gonna, <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't need that. I'm, I'm good. <laughs> we're going to lay out like plastic everywhere because I don't want that on my beautiful Persian rug. Um, or we can just do it at your house. Or we can like rent a motel or something. And now I'm getting so You're getting into it, and now you're down. Now you're like 100%. I'm so like, here for go. it. <laughs> I am dead. I mean, okay, so this is my thing about the whole like opening up situation, though, is that like, honestly, this is what I was telling you earlier. Like, I think that I'm not as like empathetic as most people. This is why I'm saying this because I believe that. It is up to you to be vulnerable with people. And if you put up a wall and don't feel comfortable, quote unquote, you're never going to, one, be courageous. I'm getting Brene Brown on you right now. But you're not never going to be cre- cre- uh, courageous, sorry. Um, and you're never going to be brave enough to step outside your comfort zone. You have to be uncomfortable in order to grow. Like, you have to. Absolutely. And you have to be uncomfortable. Like, no one's going to tell you, like that it was a comfortable thing to be vulnerable with someone. Like, if you have, like, your, you know, darkest secret, right, and you want to talk about it with your significant other, and you are and you finally spill it, and you talk about it, and it just, like, it's gut-wrenching, right? Because you don't want to talk about that, and it's so embarrassing or humiliating or... Right. You just don't want to talk about it. But how good does it feel once it's out? Right. And once they know the weight that's been lifted off your chest? Because right. now, honestly, I feel like that's when you pass the ball to them. And that's their right. decision on how they handle that information. Are they going to accept it? Right. Are they going to grow with you? Are they going to talk about a solution? Are they going to listen? Are they going to leave? Or, right. Or are they going to judge you, walk away, and just be like, meh, I'm going to throw that vulnerable. Because, you know, at the end of the day, I think that says more about them than you. True. But it's always that fear of not wanting to lose someone because, as you said, one of their options is to leave and, like, yeah. not talk to you. Right. Uh, I guess I don't. I'm not scared of anyone walking out. I'm like, if you are not with me, the door is there. Then you've never been truly in love. But I still think it's up to you to be vulnerable with people because that's, that's like, something that I'm on, I do on my platform. And that comes so natural to me. So I think I can be a little bit biased in that sense right. where I'm very, like, no, you should be open. I don't think you need to be open. I don't think everyone needs to lay their life out on the line like I do on my social. Like I said, that comes natural. I'm very honest and very open with people about who I am, what I'm about. And I'm I'm not scared to say that I've made mistakes or that I I am making mistakes. But I think that it's okay to be, uh, you know, private as well. But uh, to a certain degree with the people around you, like that's what helps us be connected. Right. The the stories we share is what makes us connected from one another. So I think it's important to at least put in your two cents, throw in your vibe, throw in your stories that you can. And, you know, it's okay to stay private to a certain degree. But I think at some point, like, you will feel liberated when you do get extremely open. And that's why on my platform, I'm, I'm always talking about something like this breakup, right, where... I'm I'm no angel. I can totally tell you that I was not, you know, the girl for him either because I'm I'm a pretty like cold-hearted bitch. <laughs> so when he wanted like this attention, I was like you're annoying. Like go away. Like I did not I wasn't like into cuddling. I was just like eh, like you're annoying. Mm. Um so I know that that probably affected him. So I understand that like I'm not perfect, but at the same time, this is what I learned. And this is how I'm growing. And this is how I'm stepping into the next chapter of my life and putting my best foot forward and trying to be better. Where do you think that comes from, though? 
like mm-hmm. you say like your lack of empathy or like mm-hmm. your distance in your well close relationships sometimes and like yeah. not wanting to cuddle like where do you think that comes from because everything has a root totally like yeah. it's either like your past relationships or childhood or mm-hmm. how like i don't know what like maybe something happened in your past like have mm-hmm. you ever thought about where does this come from of course um that's actually something that i talked about quite a bit with my ex because he made it so pronounced like was like you are not lovey and i'm like i know but i think that one it's a personality thing I do believe that some people are more affectionate than others. That's the five love languages. I think physical touch is... Is not one of yours. Is, is Yeah, it's not. I mean, like, sex is very high up there, but not in, not the rest of it. Like, touching my leg, I don't really care. Um, and for other people, it's leave. higher. Yeah, <laughs> literally. <laughs> like, it's fine, the door's over there. No. <laughs> no, like, I'm cool to, like, lay with you, but I'm just not... Yeah, it's just definitely not my love language. My love language is called quality time. So I love to be with people off our phones, no distractions, like real quality time. So traveling, that's why I love traveling with people. Um, But I think that the root cause of like my, my distance is because when I was two, my parents divorced and my mom moved away. So I was raised by my dad Um, and I would start visiting her, but it was was very, very hard on me because I think that that's where my lack of emotion comes from. Because I feel like that's usually where you get from mom is the really sweet, affectionate, compassionate, you know love just Mm -hmm. like they just fill you with love and I think dad you know this is very stereotypical but is a little bit more of like the tough love like but that was my dad he was extremely tough but he loved me it's not that he didn't love me but um he was definitely a little bit more tough and a little bit harder on the exterior but we're so close so I don't fully understand because I'm so close with him and we're so similar but I think that it's probably because of the lack of my mom's presence when I was younger that makes me a lot less like. Were you shocked when that. your parents got a divorce? I was two, so I don't remember. Um, but like I said, it had a huge impact on me. I mean, I just right. did not right. handle it. And well. A lot of times, like um, children that come from families that have gone a divorce, it's like a lot of time you kind of like build this wall around you because. You kind of like have your parents as the reference of like, hey, this is how this ended up. Mm. So I'm going to build this wall to protect myself so that that won't happen to me. That hurt, that pain. You have to unteach yourself. (coughs) For sure. You have to like unlearn a lot of things that... Yeah. Like we all have to unlearn so many things we've learned from our parents. Yeah, it's it's a process of like unteaching yourself the bad habits and reteaching yourself new good habits and trying to hang on to the good things that you were taught yeah. and disposing of the bad ones because we you know nobody has perfect learned behaviors. Oh yeah, hundred percent. So yeah, I mean that's one of the things I've been a lot more aware of. But at the same time, it's not like I'm gonna be somebody that I'm not either. Like I'm not going to step into my next relationship and try and be a girl that I'm not. I just am more hyper aware. I'm really open about it. Like I am talking to a guy right now, and I literally told him like flat out, I'm like, just so you know, I am not super affectionate. I'm not gonna text you back. Like I'm right. just not like this. So yeah. please be prepared. Know that I care <laughs> about you, but I'm yeah. not like. I I already heard one of you guys' conversation on the speaker and me being me, I was analyzing it. And it was so interesting because like he called you. Yeah. And he said, hi. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. (laughs) Okay. See you. Bye. Okay. And you said, hi. Okay. So I want you to come pick me up at 830 because I'm going to be done at eight. We just we just uh, shot and now we're going to go do the podcast. And then I'm really hungry, so I'm gonna go buy food. Are you hungry? He was like, yeah. Um, uh, yeah. And then he was like, should I buy food? You're like, no, I wanna go to Air One, I wanna buy food. I'm, you like planned everything? He was just kinda like in for the ride. You you were just kinda like talking to yourself. I love how you analyzed yourself. my two, like literally yeah. 30 second You were just like call. basically talking to yourself. I do the same thing, like whenever I need to I just no think idea. out loud, yeah. I call my boyfriend. That's so funny. I literally call my boyfriend yeah. and I put my thoughts to words and then yeah. we hang up. But it's like, but it's, all, <laughs> it's amazing. But it's also getting his two cents in. Like, are you okay with that? Right. Because that's what I'm doing. <laughs> it's basically a yeah. waiver. I think that's an and independent thing, though. He just signs thing, the bottom. Basically, 100%. <laughs> 
<laughs> like maybe just sign on the dotted line okay great thank you very much yeah i totally you agree. will be seen at 8 30 yeah i mean that's just independence though no like i just for sure and it's the strong personality and like yeah you you know what you want you know yeah, it's not like definitely because a lot of girls like the go- guy calls and like this is a huge problem i guess with like girls like okay what do you want to eat and just like i don't know yeah what do you want to eat right but like he called you and you were like, okay, I'm hungry. I'm going to be done at this time. I wouldn't yep. come pick me up. I want to eat air one. Yep. And we're going to back to my house. Like everything yep. was thought of already yep. and everything. planned yep. in your head. And you were just letting him know. Yeah, <laughs> basically. <laughs> like, here's the agenda. Make sure you show up or don't. It's fine. <laughs> oh my gosh. That's so funny. I love, I love the analysis. That was great. It was fun because so I, theory. I need a theory next <laughs> on my my relationship and how great it's going to go. <laughs> well, you mentioned that <clears throat> you've never been in love like that, but you Mm-mm. said that you were with this guy for five years. So mm-hmm. how were you with someone that you were not in love with for five years? And you know that's something that I've still been thinking about, and I'm trying to really understand it a little bit more. Um, I think that I fell in love with the idea of us. And I think that a lot of people actually do that in relationships. And um, when I say that I'm not in love with him, I, I, I definitely had an attachment to him. I had an attachment to, again, the idea of what we were, which was more so a futuristic thing. It was all hypothetical because I don't think he was ever where I needed him to be. Um, and, but I saw his potential. So I saw where he was going and I, I thought that it aligned well with, with my potential right. and that our future would be well. So within the five years, first off, they went by really fast, to be honest with you. So it's weird for me to say out, out loud five years, but it went by really fast. And honestly, I wouldn't take it back for the world. It taught me so much. It taught me way more about loving, way more about giving love, um, how to um, batch your time, still be productive, still have my own shit, my own career, my own life and not have him be too like clinging to that, you know? Um, so I was still really independent, but I think that the reason that I wasn't really in love is more so just, I didn't have that, like that fire, like the, there, the, it, on paper, it was, it was great to be honest with you. And I think that's why I was looking for the long-term investment, but I think that all of the red flags really added up also in the back of my mind over the years because there was a lot of like red flags that were happening as it was going and um, we had broken up in 2016 in the Bahamas um, because he literally was in like a hotel room with a bunch of models without me there at four o'clock in the morning doing drugs and they were all naked. So something like this, you know, like something like that. I'm like, that's such a huge red flag. Why would a guy do that? I didn't really understand. Um, and so I don't know why, why I stayed with him as long as I did, but I think attachment is my best understanding. And it becomes this comfort zone. Well, first of all, don't ever fall in love with potential. Yeah. Potential is this like promise of the future and you like, you keep waiting for it and then another year goes by and they're still not where you want to be exactly. but now you love them more and you're more attached to them yes so now it's even harder well it's and even then- worse because it's not even like it's not even the materialistic it's the for me it was like the respect like he never respected me in what way since day one um it, it, just in the sense of like his perception on women and how he viewed them and like for instance we had like a really huge like we did we did this all on my social because i was really active on my social with him we were very very public um and we had this whole debate on like girls with wearing no bras he was like it's it looks bad you guys need to wear a bra it it makes no sense why you would think that your nipples coming out is okay especially if it's a white t-shirt blah 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 my coming back was that is my body my choice if i want if i want to go topless i'm gonna go top like i can do whatever i want to like don't right. tell me he was trying to tell me to put a bra on for something <laughs> and i can't remember what so i was like i'm not putting on a bra like no <laughs> and right. he was like no you need to so like can we take this to the platform and like let's talk this is a mm. huge topic and let's what talk. were the responses you got because that's interesting like i honestly don't even know where i stand with that uh, he well, so the 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 thing is, is I feel like in the end we actually both had the same perception on it. But he was really adamant on the fact that he wanted me to wear a bra right then, and I was really adamant on the fact of you can't control me. Mm. So we both had two different mi- mi- mindsets, but it kind of concluded, which we both agreed, is that it's completely fine to wear no bra if you don't want to. I think 
if you want your nipples to be out, power to you. Mm -hmm. My personal choice is I don't do that. I don't want my nipples out there. Um, especially around like family. That was a big topic. It's like, if I'm around family, like I truly believe that being a little bit more conservative is better than anything. Like just that one weird uncle hugs you for (laughs) far longer than he should be. (laughs) But that's what I'm saying. You know, like around family, it's important. Like you gotta be, yeah, you just want to look classy. Right. Um, and I, I definitely don't think that like having your boobs hanging out when you meet his family is cute. But I do believe that like if you're wanting to just wear a, a t-shirt and you don't want to wear a bra, like don't wear a bra then. Like I don't wear a bra a lot and I'm totally right. fine with that. So I think, but the thing is, is I don't think that you should project your choices on other people. And that's really what 100%. I was trying to explain to him is like, I can look at a girl across the room who is wearing something completely sheer, like and honestly, I would never do that, but I have nothing to judge against her because that's her choice. It's her body. The girl, do whatever you want. If that makes you feel hot, if that makes you just, if that's just who you are, I don't even know what your reasons are. But then are. you whatever can be are, afraid great. when you get the wrong attention also. I think that it just comes down to you deciding like, what do you want to put out? Do I want to get the wrong attention or not? Sure. If you want to, yeah. fuck it. Go Nike it. Who cares? Yeah. I think it's country. the whole objectifying thing is that 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 what the nipple topic is to begin is feeling objectified by their by a woman's nipples, but I think I don't know. I think for me I'm just I'm just neutral. Honestly, I'm so neutral. Right. It's just I know what I want and what I want is I would never wear anything sheer. I would never have my nipples hanging out. I would never be posting topless on Instagram. It's just not my choice. It's right. just not my choice. But girls that do it all the time, I have friends that do all of that, and I don't really care. That's your that's your right. life. That's your life. I honestly agree, too. And it's it's exactly like what type of image you're trying to portray of yourself, mm-hmm. you know, comes kind of like back to that. Um, I definitely know girls who, you know, do wear a sheer jumpsuit with right. no bra it's fine no one's telling you not to but then it comes back to you know then you can't be upset when people like kind of objectify you make certain comments to you that they won't make to another girl who is not showing her areola (laughs) you know it just comes down to that and um a lot of times with like things like that in a relationship though it's like how and in what tone somebody like asks you to do something yeah, right. this is something i have with my boyfriend too but that's it's the like, thing he was like judging me he was like right. ew and i'm like Pfft. right in, i'm in sorry a sense, you like these exactly. actually <laughs> in a sense like yeah. that it's like when they say it in a certain way yep. then you're then you come out in the other way and you're like of course no i'm i'm a free woman i want to wear whatever i yeah. want to wear you can't control me and it like turns into that this. argument yes where in fact it could be like Baby, I love your boobs and they look beautiful. I just don't want you to get the wrong attention and feel uncomfortable when yep. you're in public. Yes, exactly. I want you to feel safe. Mm-hmm. So I think it's better if you put a bra on. Right. Or change your shirt so that it's not a white right. shirt and right. it's not like kind of see-through. And yep. then you can be comfortable when you take your bra. You know? Yes. They could just, but it's if it's a, just it's, like yeah, a it's ew, committing to each other too and knowing that like you need to just come to some sort of term so that everyone leaves happy. Right. Like you should, you should hear him and he should hear you. And you come to a conclusion. I think it doesn't come down to just making a point, you know? Right. Because for me, like, in, in that moment, I was like, half of me was like, I want to make a point. Right. Because I felt so strongly right. about how he was wrong. But right. then, as as we discussed it later, because right. I went through the, we went through this whole thing, and then the next day, and, you know, after the Instagram stories and the poll and the whole thing, and we talked about it again, that's what we talked about. It's like, no, but at the end of the day, like, we just don't want the ba- the wrong image. That's all. Absolutely. And, and I never meant to make you feel this way. I never meant to do this feel this way. And then you just come and right, absolutely. A comment term. One right. of my favorite lines I ever read in a book was that every time uh, two people come inside and into an argument, they both come out of the argument being more sure about their perspective and their mm. point of view than when they started. Yeah. Because that's why there's no winning an argument. It's right, like when yeah. you enter an argument with someone, they're going to defend their point to death. And so are you. Yep. And by the end of that argument, not only you're not going to have a conclusion, but also you're going to be way farther apart than when you started it. Yep. 
Yeah, I agree. I think it comes down to like, even in life, um, I talked about this on my stories literally the other day because I was getting a lot of trolls on, I, I posted a video, um, as you know, like TikTok is trending and I love it. I think it's so much fun. I enjoy making dances. Yeah, I, I and think you're it's, so good at it too. I think it's, it's really just cute. fun. It's just like a, a time to pass and also it's very, very fun. Like mm. me and my girls love doing it. It's just like a quality time thing for us now. So we posted a video on Instagram where it's me and my girlfriend, Shell. We're on the beach. We're in our bikinis. And we're just doing this dance, like, whatever, right. in the sand. And um, it it blows up. And, like, a lot, of the, a lot of the things were, like, mean. People just been like, oh, you guys want attention, whatever. Ignored it. We post another video. This video is like not at the beach, not in, be like I'm wearing a bikini top, I'm wearing shorts and like a throw over and a bucket hat, like full outfits. We just do another dance. Uh, it got 6.6 .6 million views, but 80% of the comments are trolls, hating, like hating on us. And my point is, is you don't come on my page and bring your opinion and the best, the best way I've heard this is from Lauren Everett's Skinny Confidential. She's amazing. She, she says, like, you would never walk into my house and make a comment about my interior design. Nobody fucking asked, right? So why would you walk on right. someone's page? The difference is your house is private. Your page is public. But this is the thing, is even when it's public, it doesn't mean that your opinion is more valid. Right. Unsolicited. I'm not saying that I'm not more open to trolls, but I'm still saying like as a consumer, me walking onto your page, my opinion's irrelevant, right? So why are you going to walk in and bring negative energy? What's the point of that? If you really had something to intend on saying to that person, I would go via DM and say, hey, I just want to let you know this is my thought process. Maybe you could hear it out, blah, blah, blah. Moving on with my life. But the right. trolls were like... Ugh, I just can't even start. They're awful. Mean, so I don't. I think it comes the same way with the other way. What we're talking about before is like when you have a, a conversation with somebody, right. like open mindedness is key. Like 100%. it comes in, and you have to just be like 100%. hear the other person's side. Yeah, I mean like influencers and like influencers like blown up in an internet is like somewhat of a newer thing. But I mean like you go on YouTube and you look at like Beyonce and J Lo's video, and there's like people in the comment section like. Oh, yeah like giving them lecture and telling them that like they're like a hoe and like giving negative oh, yeah. feedback and as if <laughs> Beyonce is going to take the time out of her day to go look and read to go she look might. at your two fucking cents and care but like this has been a part of like our society it's just like yeah. as long as you get attention there will always be people who are going to have something they're negative gonna to troll, say of and course. then are going to be people who are going to have something positive to say you can mm. never just fully like kick out the people that are like having negative opinions and negative like comments it's just you know obviously like you know this but it's just mm -hmm. like you kind of gotta like no you just yeah no yeah you don't even out. honestly it goes straight over your head and and sometimes we find them using we literally did a follow-up video reading the hate comments because we thought it was funny we were like this is look kind of like amusing but the whole story of it all is just like don't be that person that's like what we mm. talked about at the end is like please don't be the person that's just going on so much page to spread hate and nobody it. cares yeah about your opinion except yeah. you <laughs> yep i agree well this was really fun thank you yes. so much for coming Thank you. I'm so happy to be here. I appreciate you. Yeah, it was fun. Sliding in the DMs. Yeah. <laughs> Do you want to just tell people your Instagram also real quick? Yes. My Instagram is at the life of lips. Lips as in L-I-B-S. -L yeah. Not lips. Exactly. L-I-B-S. Yeah. All right. Thanks for coming. Bye, guys. Bye. <laughs> Shake it up, stop when the clock hits 13 You've been working, watch your blurting With the weekend, you can freak out